Hey guys, it's your boy, Matthew. I was just checking to make sure that it started recording. I uh, filmed a video the other day and I'm just talking away for 15 minutes. And then I went and checked my phone and I forgot to start recording. <laughs> just talking away to empty space. Just like when I'm at home. <laughs> Sounds like just my doing I'm alone. <laughs> Don't they say that the first sign of that you're insane is that you talk to yourself? Yeah. It's even worse when my self answers back. Moving on. I realized that I used hexagons that I made. I believe it was in video number four. And uh, I hadn't actually filmed myself making the hexagons. There were hexagons I made a while ago before I decided to even start a YouTube channel. So I thought I would make some more of the hexagons for you. Here's the small hexagon mold. And then here's a large hexagon mold. I bought both of these off of... Uh, I believe these came off Etsy. And they're not deep, very deep at all. So this is really a fairly quick video. I'm just gonna mix up some resin. Mix in, I found this C-E-Y-A blue. C-E-Y-A blue. Sia. Reminds me of my favorite singer. Although obviously not spelled the same. <laughs> I'm unstoppable. I'm a Porsche with no brakes on it. Invincible. That was lovely, I just burped in the middle of that. Um, the nice thing about this container is that it's kind of like one of those, like a uh, pepper. You buy a big old thing of black pepper. It's got this side where you would scoop in if you wanted a whole bunch of it. And it's got this side where you could just sprinkle it a little bit. It's nice, this is a nice cap because mica powder does tend to get everywhere. Okay, so having said all that, I'm gonna spend four minutes mixing up some resin if you don't want to listen to me talk for the next four minutes, just fast forward and ahead. Won't hurt my feelings. I won't even know you did it. Um, this, this is, these are all fairly shallow, which is a song I hear people sing at karaoke all the time. Um, so I'm guessing this is probably only gonna need like maybe three ounces of resin total. You know me, I always say that you could measure out how much resin you're gonna need, but then I just wing it, cause you know, why not live on a wing and a prayer? Whoopsies, I was gonna try to do 1.5, but then I'm just talking away. All right, so we got two fluid ounces of part A. Let me put this down here for one second. Again, I'm using clear cast epoxy from Alumalite. This is the brand that they sell at Michael's. Although I do buy it from their website because I find it's cheaper. And you can enroll in their reward program and you get, I think it's 50 bucks back for every $50 you spend. And resin is not cheap. So I put in two ounces of part A, so now I'm gonna put in two ounces of part B. Two, two, two. Catch those dribbles there. Two, perfect. Neo. I'm just gonna move this scale over here. Put the resin down over here. Funk. Let's stir this for four minutes. I'm hoping this is enough resin. Oh, hold on, let me just check the clock. Just so I know. Just so I know it's uh, 3.48. Okay, so four minutes would be 3.52? Yeah, except I don't know how long it's been 3.48 for. All right, so we'll go to 3.53 on the clock. All right, so when you stir up parts A and B, you wanna scrape down the sides of your cup, just to make sure that not like a huge blob of resin gets stuck just there. It happens, resin is sticky. It can be a pain to work with. It can be sticky and messy. And then scrape down the sides of the cup and also scrape down your stick because you uh, want to make sure that all of these, all of part A and all of part B gets properly mixed and integrated. Otherwise your resin might not set up correctly. And I've had it happen before where you go through the whole process, you pour the stuff in the mold and then you come back a day later and it's still liquidy. And then you've usually ruined both the resin and the mold it's impossible to clean out, especially if it's like partially set up. 
Anyways, just make sure to stir, 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 stir. This is a very calming, very regulating activity in my opinion. I like doing some things that are monotonous sometimes. Just to take a break, sit down. One of the reasons I like to do shapes like this, I have some circles and I have a whole bunch more in the basement that I'll probably be making into YouTube videos soon. But uh, one of the reasons I like to make shapes like this is because it reminds me of my second grade art teacher, Miss Molly. That wasn't her name, by the way. That was her nickname. It might have been her middle name. I think it was just her nickname. Her name started with S, her first name. And I'm not gonna give any more identifying characteristics, but she always has to call her Miss Molly. And uh, there was one day where we came in and she had all these like squares, circles, triangles, rectangles, hexagons, just sitting on a table like blocks, kind of like Lego pieces, but they were the basic shapes, basic geometric shapes. And she said, here, take these shapes, trace around them, color them in, see what you can create. And I created a mosaic out of a bunch of shapes. And I still have it in my basement. I'll show it to you someday. And uh, she complimented it. And it was one of the nicest compliments that anyone's ever given me. It was a long time ago when I was seven. And I still think about that day often. Because that was the day I realized that I really am amazing. And I could do anything. People who are safe for me, that is. Mm -hmm. Not my immediate family growing up, but my teachers were fairly safe. I like going to school. It's one of the few environments where I felt safe. Even when the kids picked at me, I'd be like, your bullying is literally child's play compared to the adult bullies in my life. So anyways, I like to make shapes because it reminds me of my second grade art teacher. Art was always my favorite class in school. With math being a close second. Hold on, I gotta get up <clears throat> to check the clock. Has it been four minutes? Uh, I think so. Let me just, just to make sure, because I think I might have been talking and not stirring for some of that four minutes. Let me just make sure to really scrape down the sides of the cup and scrape off the stick. Give it about 10 more seconds. So I think it's gonna be a little bit of a quicker video because uh, all I'm gonna do is add this makeup powder in a second and then pour it in there and then torch it. Okay, so I don't know how opaque this makeup powder is. I've never used it before. I'm gonna open the bigger side and I'm gonna pour it in. Mm -hmm. It's gonna estimate a little bit. There, let's try that to start. Let me mix this in here. Okay, that is very faint new blue. Very faint. That's gonna need more makeup powder. I mean, I could make, could make it like that, like a translucent type blue. The light would probably shine through it quite nicely. Where did I put this tap? <laughs> Where did I put the little thing back down? Now that my gloves are messy, it's hard for me to get that back open. I'm going to put in maybe about three times as much as I just did. I don't know, I'm just eyeballing all this. I've never used this makeup powder before, so I'm not sure how opaque it's going to get. Maybe it is just translucent. I don't even know where it came from. I was just looking through my art supplies in the basement and I found it. And I thought it was a pretty blue color. Uh, you know what? One way you can test your makeup powder is to grab a paper towel. Not your makeup powder, to test how opaque your resin is. Grab a paper towel and put just a skosh of this on the paper towel. And then see, I can see the paper towel through there. 
Also, if you pick it, if you pick it up like this in the cup, you can see the you can see on the stick, or you can see the stick through it. All right, do I really want to use like this whole vial? That's a lot of mica powder. Again, I can't get this open out. My gloves are a mess. <laughs> Why did I close it again? All right, I'm gonna put in that much more, and then I'm just gonna run with this. I'm just gonna run with it because, uh, why not? So again, just gonna stir, stir, stir. Scrape the sides of the cup, scrape the stick. I can feel it's a lot grittier. <laughs> There's a lot of mica powder in there. Now if I take a skosh of this, same, isn't it? Well, that might be as dark as that mica powder is going to get. Okay, let's go with it. One of the nice things about art is uh, sometimes things don't turn out exactly the way you were planning in your mind's eye, but that's okay. Also, if you keep doing the same piece over and over again, you can keep doing the same piece over and over again. But usually it's better every time. Yeah, this is gonna be a little bit transparent. It's gonna be nice. It's also gonna be a little hard to tell because the mold itself is green and this mica powder is blue. It can be a little bit hard to tell what your finished product is gonna look like depending on the color of the mold, just because of how the eye processes light. If this mold was white, Probably would be a little bit easier to tell what your finished practice is exactly going to look like. But part of the fun of resin is that uh, you never quite know what it's going to look like when it's done. It's going to be similar to how you left it, but as it settles, it's going to change a little bit. Probably These probably aren't going to change overly that, that much because I'm only using one color. It's when you mix several different colors of resin together that you get all sorts of fluid effects and randomness that cannot really be planned for. It just happens. And I'm gonna have a bunch left over again because, again, like I said, I was I just winged. <laughs> I just winged it as to how much resin I actually needed to mix up. Just wing it. Why not live on a wing and a prayer? So now as those small ones are settling, I'm going to go back and try to fill in these big ones. And I'm going to let, I'm just trying to look at it from the side. <clears throat> you can tell that uh, a lot of people will put resin into doming. Did I just... I just dipped the bottom of the cup into this mold by accident because I was tilting. I think that's exactly what I did. Um, if you look at it from the side, you can tell that the resin comes up just the tiniest bit above, and it's called doming. A lot of people will dome their resin. Because the, the finished product looks nicer, and then you don't have to worry about sanding it. Sometimes the edges can be a little, I don't know if sharp is the right word, but sometimes the edges can be a little bit rough, maybe. And uh, then I would get out my Dremel and just sand the resin. But if you dome the resin to begin with, usually you don't end up with too many rough edges. So now I'm just gonna go back. And that one actually right there looks pretty full. The left middle one. Or is it your right? I'm not sure which way this video is oriented. This one definitely needs more. This one definitely needs even more. Okay. Okay, so 
because now as I look at the big ones from the side, this one's don't mean this one's don't mean this one's don't mean that one. I think there's just a hair more. Those four are pretty good now. And out of these nine, I'm looking at it from the side. I think that one, that one, that one, that one. I'll need a little bit more. You can see now the bubbles on these. All that white, foamy, frothy stuff right here in the middle. That is just air bubbles. That's what happens with resin. And uh, that's why you torch to get rid of most of them. Or you could leave them in there. I mean, yeah. Like I always say, I don't care if there's imperfections in my art. We're all perfectly imperfect. It's far easier to be a critic than a creator. of Wanda Sykes. I'ma be me. I love you, Wanda Sykes. <clears throat> okay, so I'm looking at these from the side. That's good, 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 that's good. Okay, they all look good. Now, I don't want to torch this too much because the mold is so shallow. I don't want to accidentally burn the mold. But I also don't want to set the trash bin on fire. <laughs> but as you can see, a lot of those bubbles went away. So Neil, I'm on the other side of the table now, just checking them off on the side. They all look good? Yeah. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna come back every five minutes and torch these. Through some of my molds over here. It's kind of dirty, but it's okay. I have an extra mold here of uh, like Lego blocks because I have more of this blue. I'm just gonna pour some of this in here. Let's make even more shapes while we're at it. Not just hexagons. Let's make a square and a rectangle. And then, how much resin do I have left? enough for two more of these. Which ones do I want? Well, it depends on the size of them, too. Let me make that L one. Why? Because it's an L. Because why the L not? <clears throat> I don't have enough resin to make all of these pieces. As I... And then maybe one of these, one of these, I just, I don't know if there's enough for this one. I do like that really long one, but I'm not sure I have enough resin in here. Eh, let's just go for it. Like I always say, just live on a ring, live on a wing and a prayer. Because why not? Because why the hell not? Yeah, there is enough here. Obviously, I'm terrible at eyeballing how much resin I need. <laughs> Just when, once I like get in the mood to do an art project, I just want to go. The setup, the cleanup, that's all the boring part. The actual creating process, the process of creating something, that's the awesome part. All right, so I'm looking from the side. That one's doming, that one's doming, that one's doming, that one's doming. And I've got, what, like three dribbles of resin left? Not enough. I don't think, I don't think I even have enough for that smallest one. I don't think there's enough, so. All right, I'm just gonna throw the rest of this resin away because there's almost fun left. Resin is expensive, so I do try to use all of it. I don't wanna. Yeah, I don't want. There's a little bubble right there. See, see how that one just smoked up? I might torch that a little bit too much. Uh, I do a fire extinguisher over here, which I think I've said several times. So. I'm gonna stop recording and then I will come back every five minutes or so to check and give this a really quick torch. And then I'll be back tomorrow to unmold some hexagons and then some other random shapes that I made for you. See you soon.
Hey guys, I'm back. It's been about 24 hours for me. And these are ready to be unmolded. We got the hexagons and then a couple extra blocks. Or a couple of blocks that I made with the extra resin. So, let me just take off this old tote. Again, I try to put old totes on top of my art while it's still drying, just because like dust and stuff. There's always dust, you can't get rid of dust. I see the only two things in life that are sure are taxes and death. I think I should add dust to that list. It never goes away. Anyways, let's unmold these. I see that this, this one got nasty. Nasty air bubble right there after I had gone to bed and left it to to set. Luckily that's on the bottom side of the block. What I could do is I could file it down, depending on how popped up that is. And then put a little tiny bit more drop of resin in there. Or I just leave it the way it is. It's on the bottom. This is these were extra pieces, anyways. I did come back and torch this time. These hexagons are super clear. I got rid of the bubbles from those. This one, I don't know, formed a nasty bubble after I let it just sit. All right, having said that, let me pop these blocks out of here. I got this square, this uh, four by four. You know what I just realized? These blocks don't hook into each other because, right, there would have to be holes in the bottom of this mold. Hmm. The mold would have to be made differently for these blocks to fit in, to lock into each other. And there's the L. Put that out. There's something in the resin right there. I love when my art is... There's a little tiny bit of overflow right there that just ripped off. I love when my art is imperfect because, like I always say, we're all perfectly imperfect. And for people who insist that art needs to be perfect, yeah. for the critics out there, who cares? Don't listen to them. <clears throat> if they were capable of creating something this beautiful, they would create it. Instead, they're jealous. So they criticize those of us who can create things like this. You know what I'm thinking? Is this black background too dark? I did go and get this piece of poster board. Is this gonna look nicer? Also, the, <laughs> I taped this bag, this trash bag to the table and the tape is loose on that side. So, it's time to probably throw it away. I ordered a white silicone mat from uh, Amazon because resin doesn't stick to silicone. It just, you know, hasn't made it here yet. It's still in shipping. How does that look? Am I way out of frame? I'm trying to climb up on this chair to, to look into the lens of the camera. <clears throat> it's not the most comfortable. If I had more friends, if I had any friends, <laughs> they could come help me record. <clears throat> All right, now I'm too far to the right. There we go. Now it's time to pop out these hexagons. That was the reason I made these in the first place. But uh, I do like these, these blocks. Just some random shapes for people to play with. Let's build a tower. There we go. All right, Jenga, your turn. Pull out one of those without destroying it. <laughs> well, that sounds impossible. Oh, you lost. <clears throat> all right, let me just pop all of these into one of these millions of cups that I have lying around. This is what I was trying to make. Ooh, see that popped out really nicely. And as you can see, I hope the camera's picking it up. It's a little bit transparent, but all the, there's almost no bubbles. I did come back and remember to torch these a bunch of times. And now I'm just gonna pop them all out. That one just fell right out. All right, so here are nine of the smaller ones. Getting out of frame. I gotta figure out how to set this camera better, but it's also one o'clock in the morning. 
And I want to go to sleep at some point soon. Why almost have I pop all these together? Oh, there we go. It's a Catan tile. You guys, anyone else play Settlers of Catan? Or any of its a million expansions? There you go. There's a mountain which produces brick or ore. Can't remember. <clears throat> and now let me pop out these bigger ones. Yeah, these. Those just pop right out. So. I'm going to put four together like that. And we got two extra ones here. So, there you go. Little hexagons that anyone can play with. You know what, what if I turn this one so they're both oriented in the same direction? Can you see the top of my head right now? Check for male pattern baldness while you're there. <clears throat> it scares me. Although I am 42 and I still had a bunch of hair, so. <clears throat> maybe, maybe, I'll, oh, I see, there's, there's the tiniest bit of overflow right there. Can you see this? If I get this up really close to the camera. You see there's like a little nub right there? Oh, now it's focusing on it. There are two things you can do. One, you can take a scissors like this and just cut off that little piece of overflow. Or you can take a nail file like this, which I bought from the beauty aisle of the supermarket. And you could you can file it down. This one is big enough that I think I can just take a scissors and go, boom. Yeah, it just fell somewhere. And then, oops, I'm out of camera. There you go. That little extra piece is gone. Oops, sorry. Ooh, I just dropped everything. <laughs> I have a carpal tunnel, so my fingers get numb all the time. It also makes it hard to paint and do other arts sometimes. But uh, I find myself dropping things constantly. And I just don't feel like having the surgery because, uh, I don't know, somehow I don't trust someone to cut into my hands. I'm just kind of terrified of surgery. Anyways, now that I cut off that extra nub, oh, those fit together a lot better now. Speaking of which, I think that was the piece of nub right there. All right, these are these beautiful hexagons that I made, which you can play with if you make them. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.